Thank you for joining us for this edition of Sports Leaders. My guest today is a former athlete who hit new heights in his discipline. He held the world record of six meters and 15 in the pole vault for a staggering 21 years. He's now turned his hand to leadership. He's an IOC member. He's the president of the National Olympic Committee in Ukraine and the vice president of the IAAF. I'd like to welcome Sergei Bubka. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you for the invitation and to have this opportunity to have talks with you. Oh, it's a great pleasure to see you. Thanks for coming in. Um, Sergei, before we actually start talking uh, and discussing athletics, we're just going to have a, a look at some of the highlights of your career. It's a pleasure. Sergei, it must stir up some great memories just looking at these images. No, of course. Uh, you know, this is my life. I become known all over the world because of my sports career, because of athletics. And from childhood, I really spent all my time with sport. And of course, I'm very happy to, to see some images which is very close and very touching. And of course, it's one of the images was Paris, the six meters in 1985, 13 of July, which is a really special relation for me, Paris and France. Uh, you're talking about Paris, of course, 1985, but uh, is there another date, another two dates that are really meaningful for you in those clips that we saw? Well, I think it is generally, it's, we, we can touch it's Olympic Games, 1988. This is one of my medals, but only one Olympic medal. And of course, I'm very happy because I become Olympic champion. And it's important for me, it's 1983, the first world championships, which is open the doors and make the world surprise some guy from Ukraine. His name Sergei Bubka, no one knew it. And for me, it was a real test to come to sport and start to to develop my sport career. And what an impact you, you've had on athletics in general. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the transition from going from an athlete into a sports leader? Was it easy? <clears throat> For me, it was fine because uh, I love sports since childhood. During my career, I dreamed to be involved in sport administration, but that time was Soviet Union. I realized it will be very difficult. It's almost mission impossible. But through all the changes which happened in Soviet Union, Soviet Union disappeared, Ukraine became independent. And after the big changes in Olympic movement, I became IUC member in 1999. 
from 2001, when I retired, I became the member of IWF Council. And it's, it's really bring me to sport and make my transition, it's much easier. Might be also it's much easier because I planned that I, one day I, I retired. During my career, when I was 26, I tried to establish Sergei Bubka Sports Club, where I dreamed to give opportunity for kids to start sport, to start athletics, and build their successful life through education in sport. And it also was the situation, for that time, it was a very difficult transition period for my country. And people didn't have job, not enough money, no salaries. And I tried to develop the club for kids and organize Paul World Stars competition to bring people to sport, to watch and enjoy and forget the problems which surrounding them. And the Paul World Stars competition, that time we call Masters because I did together with Green Nobel. This is again special relation and links and some lessons from France, from French athletics in, in, in my career. And the club has also given me experience to give back and help athletes also to participate in different competitions because it's become a new life for us. We didn't know anything because everything was managed by our federation before. This was interesting time which give a lot of opportunities and help to prepare the future. This is important for the athletes to prepare and think for what in one day when you, when you retired, how you will manage your life. For me, this is always something in my mind. And of course, I consider I'm a happy man because I'm with sport. And today I'm in sport administration, where I can give something back to sport right. and give, believe, great uh, inspiration and passion for young generation, for young people to, to discover sport and to be the champion and to be stro a strong personality. Um, you're talking about so many success stories within a, um, a very illustrious career. Were there, any, were there any disappointments? Well, look, I can tell you, if we look my career, it looks very easy, very smooth, and looks very successful. But I would like to tell behind this, I had incredible work. And his most difficult opponent, it's become yourself. When you, you, you beat your, your weaknesses, you become stronger. When you feel difficult, when you sometimes think ah, it's impossible, but you not give up, you continue to work, and you become, you become successful. You, you, you achieve the goals, and you build strong character. In general, it's a it's great career, but of course you need to be also very strict, very disciplined, very, very focused, and of course to be hard worker. Disappointments, of course, you're not winning all the time. Sure. Not winning all the time. And I had some, some lost. I would say very disappointed uh, to miss of Olympic Games 1984. I had incredible chance, but it was boycott. Soviet Union political leaders, they, they dismissed our dreams. Thanks God, in four years, I become Olympic champion. But for most of athletes, it's never dream comes true. This is very important today in my position to remember that and do utmost and do the best, never give any chance to develop the boycott of any Olympics or in any championships. Because this is a great opportunity to be together. Now, um, you've held many positions within um, various federations, of course, including the IOC, and you've been a candidate for the IOC presidency. Uh, what are your thoughts on the way that President Bach has presided over the committee? Well, I think it was a really good decision. Even I was the candidate, but for me, I knew I am young, but I would like to bring my ideas, I would like to bring the ideas. The President Bach was elected He's our colleague, he's our friend. In this short term, in one year, he done a fantastic job. He's Olympic champion, he's real leader, and he loves sport, he loves the movement. For him, 
his dedication for sport, it's, it's clear. And now we can see in one year, he is always busy, he is always traveling, a lot, a, a lot of meetings all over the world, but he wants to bring Olympic movement to another level. And that another level, of course, we saw down in Monaco in the 127th International Olympic Committee session that there were 40 recommendations that passed. Um, we're not going to go through all 40, of course. It'll take quite a long time. But um, which of these recommendations are the most significant for you? Well, I think it's really a historical moment with these 40 recommendations. They're very, very important. And as we understand it, it must be all 40 accepted. And it's really great success. What is very close to me, I would say, as chairman of Entourage Commission, this changes and these ideas that we have there to invest from IOC $20 million in fight against doping, to fight the corruption, to fight uh, fixed matching, this is, I consider, it's very, very important for us because the athletes is not alone. The athletes has entourage. And as we can see nowadays, its entourage has incredible impact. And when I spoke 10 years ago, everyone looked at me, what are you talking, Sergey? Because at that time I brought, who is behind the athletes? Let's look, someone teaching, someone guiding, or someone cheating. For that, I consider this recommendation with the investment to success of the future and protection of clean athletes very, very important for me. That we should pay attention, we should more invest financially and also timing, education for athletes and entourage. And of course, everyone should understand there's no way, no way to condemn sports and only the way clean sport fair competition and this direction should be very tough but it's also we must work harder and harder we, we're going to touch on um, uh, doping within sport a little bit later on as well, Sergei. So I'm going to um, ask you a few questions with uh, some images that we've actually got. Um, can we talk now about August 2015? Uh, it's a very, very important year for the IAAF. Lemin Diak will step down from his position, the, uh, one of the most powerful uh, positions in world sport, of course. Um, he presides over the IAAF, but uh, since he's been in office, um, what key significant changes have been made within the Federation, do you think? Well, for me, it's always important, and I always use the motto, if you don't remember past, you don't have the future. If we look to, to, to leadership of President Diak, we can see the president pay a lot of attention for development for development of our sport all over the world. Because it's many countries really contributing and also benefiting from developing program of IWF. This is one of important area. We had quite difficult financial crisis and president went well through all this. And IWF went well, we signed agreements until 2029 with Denso, financially we secured this is very positive steps. Of course, we challenging, it's not only athletics, generally all sport challenging doping. This is threat of 21st century. The, the, we invest among other international federation the most money also from that. We are leading in this fight. We develop independent ethics commission for different kind issues. This is very important. President also look forward about the youth regarding the kids and program was developed kids athletics. Kids athletics, it's also key for future of success of our sport. We must integrate kids. We must bring athletics to, to the grassroots, to society, to serve society. This is some highlights what president done through his career. Sebastian Coe has officially launched his uh, campaign for the IAAF presidency. Can we expect a bid from you too? Well, I think 
I had some already mention and statement that it's, it's in, in one day it's, I will speak about that. And I put also on my Twitter with regard that I will do in due time. With regard my colleagues and friends, they know my plans and athletics is my life. And I think we should wait a little bit and then <laughs> soon you will get some, some message because also in these days I would like to, to communicate with my colleagues to understand better their needs importance for future of athletics in this collaboration i believe it will be also good and bright future for our sport okay well i'm not going to push you any further on that sergey Thank of course uh, we'll be waiting patiently for this news um, when we come back after a small commercial break we'll be discussing an athlete who has had a massive impact on athletics and sport in general so don't go away Welcome back to Sports Leaders, where I've been joined by the Vice President of the IAAF, Sergei Bubka. Uh, the World Championships in Beijing will take place this summer, of course, and in the last three editions, well, we've seen one man who's just stolen all of the limelight, and this is who he is. I'm the fastest man in the world. I'm the fastest man in the world. I'm the same boat. Now, sometimes we get the impression that Usain Bolt is bigger than his own sport, which brings a positive and also a negative impact on athletics. Uh, now, Sergei, there are so many incredibly talented athletes out there. We can name just a few. Um, Farah, Harting, Fraser, for example. Why do you think these athletes don't gain the same prominence and have the same international impact as Bolt? Well, I think we should add also Renaud Lavellini. If you agree, oh, of course, please. There's no doubt about that, of course. <laughs> no, I think it's, of course, we are very pleased to have such outstanding athlete like Usain Bolt. With regard our other talented heroes of athletics, we need to, I consider, we must be also a little bit more proactive to present the image, to present the personalities. Of course, as one of the solution, what you are doing your job through television. But today we have a lot of possibility in modern technology to present our stars on YouTube. We should develop more information, more life stories about our outstanding champions. So, so you think it's really a, a media element which has no, to but, come and, to the forefront? But you know, like we have the Athletics Gala. Together, I mean International Federation, Continental Association, the National Federation, we must be professional. We love athletics, we have passion, but we run professionally. We need to take all the tools in consideration how to present our champions, how to make attractiveness of the competition, how to people recognize them and they become her heroes, they become role models. I consider we must work on this way more professional, more better, and of course cooperate closely with the media and educate them to be personality outside of sport. For some of them, the language, they need to speak languages. They need to, to, to express themselves. It means we must educate them how to deal with the media, how to speak to the public. And also they need to understand they become more popular and visible when they go to kids, when they go to schools, when they go to public. This, all these aspects we must combine and professionally present it and make better impact and to, 
to, to make our stars more popular and more, more, more known around the world. Maybe the IOC can open up a school to sort of, you know, invite the athletes in to encourage them to be more, to, to just to grow in their character. But look, we can, we can do our activities also in IWF and we must go this way. With the, the IOC, this is additional, very strong possibility because with 40 recommendations, it will be also Olympic Channel in the future. And will be also very good possibility to present different sports sure. between Olympic Games, to present our heroes. This way, how we should deal, and I'm confident from IWF side, from IOC side, we can highlight and promote sport, promote our athletes to promote our heroes. We touched on um, doping. Um, well, you spoke about doping. Uh, we touched the surface just a, a few moments ago. Um, let's talk about that, that recent documentary on German television, stole the headlines for the wrong reasons, of course, accusing Russian athletes of widespread systematic doping. Now, you talked about your stance on doping um, back in December. What do you think um, should be done to get rid of this, um, this poison within sport? Well, it's, it's clear this is a threat for 21st century for sport. It's, it's really bad and very big disease, which we need to fight and we need to continue to strengthen our position. Because we see before it's, it's only athletes can be sanctioned. Today, I already mentioned about the entourage. entourage. We have entourage sanction. The, the IUC Athletes Commission and IUC Entourage Commission, National Olympic Committees, International Federations, together with the WADA, we implement a new WADA code sanction for entourage. And for me, it will be no doubt, it's no excuse. This problem exists. We must win this battle. We must, I consider, to review this allegation today. This is a serious allegation. It's really sure. make me unhappy. I was really shocked and very disappointed. But we need to review the rules. We need to be stronger in our sanctions that everyone should understand. Only clean and fair competition should bring success and highlight. And we must protect clean athletes. For that, this direction should continue we must be more efficient and more professional. I would say it's a great idea in 1999 when was created WADA, when 50% belong to sport and 50% of WADA belong to the government. We need help of governments. We need medical instruments. We need their institutions. We need scientists and experts. We need today we can see support from interior ministry, because as we can see, some tra transaction, some transition, delivery of the drugs, and some chain of many people do the business. We should stop that. But only together, only united, we can be stronger and successful in this uh, battle with the doping. Well, it's, um, it's, it's, do you think that there's not enough being done? Do you think that more can be done to actually battle this, uh, this venomous situation? Look, right now, clearly we put education. This is one of the two for, for young generation. But it's also education for entourage. This is, can be also the key. The sanctions. We have sanctions. Maybe it's not enough. We need to be more tougher. We must to be more uh, stricter and stronger in sanction. Maybe one violation, this is finish of the career. But we must protect clean athletes. I mean, it's crucial. It's, it really is. And um, what about this? I mean, I'd call it a foolish decision for the Federation to nominate Justin Gatlin on the top 10 athletes of, of the year, considering he was banned twice. Is that normal, do you think? No, I think we should uh, respect the rules. For me, it's clear for the future we must make amendments. If athletes had violation and once in his life, like current rules uh, existed, that for such a nomination, this is role model. 
this is ideal for youngsters. Absolutely. I consider we will do the changes and we will not bring anyone who violated the rule. This is important. This is very strong direction, very strong message. And this is exist. If we look election for Athletes Commission of IWF or Athletes Commission of IOC, the one of the regulation, athletes who violate the rule, not eligible to be candidate to commission. For me, this is the way if someone violate the rule, never should be present as candidate for certain position as we discuss and as we had some issue recently. Okay, well, thanks for that answer. Um, so, yeah, it's, a, it's a topic that obviously, you know, people want to know about and talk about. Let's uh, take a brighter note now in the flavor of our conversation. Um, let's take a look at an athlete who's, well, how can I say, hit new heights over the past 12 months. Well, Sergei, we obviously see a smile on your face. What do you think of this jump, and what do you think of Renault Levillini? No, this is fantastic jump. It's a great world, historical world. And, of course, I'm very happy that I contribute a little, contribute a little bit <laughs> because I'm organizer of this event. It's happening in Donetsk in Ukraine, 25th anniversary of the Paul Vol Stars competition. And uh, he gave us really great present, really great gift to all athletics in Ukraine, in my home city, and of course, generally for all athletics worldwide. This was an amazing story during the Sochi Olympic Games. Everything was focused about 616 of Renault. I really admire him. I like him very much because he is not only star, he is not only champion, he is really role model and great personality. Outside of sport, with the kids, with the people, he's a fantastic guy. Personally, I'm very happy to pass the baton to new generation with such a leader like him. We need such a heroes, and we are very proud that athletics has such a athletes like him. Do you, um, do you think that you share the same kind of um, values as uh, Renault Levillini? I think you say um, Chesnoti, I think, in Ukrainian. No, I think, I think it's exactly, we have a lot of similarity and he's always learning, He always looking for the next step. He put new goals in his career. He's very talented and very focused and this is very important for his future. Now, uh, a wonderful jump there in front of you, in front of the public. They seem to have warmed to um, uh, the Frenchman and his antics, which is wonderful, taking over the baton, as you said. Um, now, tragically, um, the Dru Druzba Arena has been destroyed since he broke that record. Um, this obviously affects you. Um, what are your thoughts on the situation in Ukraine today and the knock-on effect regarding sport in your country? Well, of course, it's a very difficult time, very challenging time, but I look more positive. I believe that soon it will be solved, and it's very difficult for see, me. We can see the images, of course, just behind of this, uh, you know, the tragic situation. Yeah, this is the hall which highlights sport, given credible history for many sports in, in, in athletics, in pole world. It was set up many world records. And of course, I feel not, not well what's happened, but 
I love my country, I, I love my people from east to west. I, I believe Ukraine will be united and U Ukraine will stay in peace. With regard to sport, we do utmost to protect our athletes, to provide financial support, to bring athletes to competition, to give opportunity for athletes from east to live now in other parts of Ukraine. It's National Olympic Committee provide finance for them, for their families and for their coaches. We rent accommodation. We provide financially for camps and participation in the competition. And this has helped us to, to really take care. Especially as National Olympic Committee, we didn't stop the, the programs. We even Thank allocate you. more money for federation and for athletes. And we try to keep them busy and focused for, for, for their participation in international events. And of course, they're succeeding. It was very difficult year, but through sports, we succeed quite well and a lot of great victories of our Ukrainian athletes. Well, that's, that's very positive to hear. Uh, we're going to now talk, um, well, just after a small commercial break, we'll talk about the future athletics. I think that's the, the word that we'll underline for this uh, uh, phase of, the, of our interview. And uh, we'll come back and talk about um, the, the novelties and the evolution of uh, new events. Stay with us. Welcome back to uh, Sports Leaders, where I've got my special guest, uh, Sergei Bubka, with me in the studio. Let's now um, talk about the future of athletics, the novelty that stole the show and a bit of limelight was the World Relays recently. Would you like to share your thoughts on, um, on this new competition format, Sergey? No, I think it's, it's very important. As world is changing, competition between different sports is big. And we must be always uh, with some new ideas. We must be very creative. And the really, it's a very exciting event, which is normally also in, in my school time. We participate in really on, on, on the streets in the city. And this event which we had in Bahamas this year, it's bring really new spirit, new ideas, new presentation of our sport. I really consider it a great idea. And also in relay, you have also possibility to highlight athletics, to set up new records. And we will continue to develop such event like uh, World Relay. Now, over the past decade, it's been quite difficult to, um, to follow the ever-changing uh, format of the Diamond League. Uh, what do you believe is the winning formula for this competition? Well, of course, it's very difficult to, to find ideal concept. But what I like it, we have global competition. And we need to have one-day competition all over the year in different parts of the world to promote our sport. What is also important to present all the discipline. We cannot make any discrimination that some event in, some event is out. We must be also very researching what we can do for Hamistro. It's beautiful discipline. It's very nice to watch. But sometimes grass, destruction of the grass, we, we move out. And Diamond League, very careful about that. But I consider we should be all together. We need to do something more. I think yes. Which way we can present it? It's today's name of Diamond League. I would look maybe to, to consider to make maybe like uh, the, the World Cup series. It's like each competition, it's one leg and with culmination in the final. Because also we should give the name which is easy to understand for the people. Who knows athletics, they follow. Who doesn't know how they can get possibility how we can present athletics, how more people can see athletics competition. This is some sort of the name, it's, it's good, good name, but why not it's like World Cup Serie, with the same concept, with the, the, the same organizers, together with IWF, because these people do an excellent job. So I like meet organizers. They're really contributing a lot for development of athletics. If this hasn't happened in the past, does that mean that it's something that really needs to be addressed very soon? I think we always need to focus and look for the future. We must lead our sport. We must do together with meet organizers, with managers, with the athletes, with the federation, how we can do better our sport. 
What kind of competition? We have World Athletics Series. This is our championships, junior, youth, marathons, all these things. But it's also one day meeting between our championships, between our top events. What we can do better? How we can do these events? This is, for me, this is important and very challenging steps should be done always to be ahead, not to be behind. Now, the biggest event on the IAAF uh, calendar is, of course, the, um, the World Championships. They'll be taking place uh, this year. And it's one of your favorite hunting grounds as well, of, of course, Sege. Um, let's take a look at this report and then we'll talk about the competition. So, okay, after the Olympics, the World Championships is the most diverse and universal competition on the sporting calendar. Why do you think the event has never made it to Oceania, Africa, and only once in the Americas? No, you're absolutely right. It's our, our the championships eight times in Europe, four times in Asia, and only once in mm -hmm. North America. And this is important for our future. We must brought our top events all over the world, and it's many developing countries. They are really willing to host. They have also now resources. They have big population. They have use, and this is one of the target for our future to spread and make diversity in different parts. We must be in Oceania. We must be more in Asia, Latin America, in Caribbean. This is the future, what we should do and what we must do and more way to come to this uh, continents. But the wait's going to be quite long, of course, you know, because we know that it's going to be, um, you know, London, uh, we've got Beijing, we've got London and then um, Doha as well. I mean, yes. it's going to be in a quite a long time, even though the World Championships are every two years now, but it's still a long wait. But look, th 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 this is already what we've done we need to look for future and we need to give maybe also more, more simple possibility to accommodate and to maybe look to the cost of championships, how we can reduce that it's discovered and open more areas to organize the, the championships. But it's also we have different categories. We have indoor, we have youth, we have junior, we have marathon, half marathon, race walking. This is the policy we need to take care to present athletics globally in different parts of the world. Now, the IOC has decided to hold some finals in the morning uh, sessions at the next Olympics in Rio. For example, the, the shot, the discus, sorry, the triple jump, 10,000 meters. Um, do you think this will make the morning sessions more attractive and help maximize visibility? Well, of course, this is very, very delicate issue to make the balance because the games watched by everyone in different parts of the world, for that its program should be also in focus to some areas. For some discipline, this is a great opportunity to be focused for spectator and watch and at its morning program will be more, more attractive because of the finals. W um, field events or track events in particular? But the, basically, you, you, you should combine because you cannot put one and then you not uh, engage another one. But this is something that's very special. 
I know from the past games, swimmer, they already had this. For athletics, we've done, I would say, first time if we not consider the marathon or race walk. But most important, everyone in same condition. And of course, will be also possibility for Europe or for, for Middle East to have some finals in the evening. Um, is it possible to compromise a timetable that, that offers maximum exposure on television for both track and field events? Is that the target? No, I think this is also that you need to provide possibility for different uh, continent to see the live competition. The otherwise, I, I know that when was discussion in our federation and also with IUC, they look, it will be maybe early in the morning when is no one can able to watch in, in Europe. This is this, the, the way how to, to balance. As I said, it's, it's not so easy issue. That's very true. And I had some discussion with the athlete. They said, why we so early in the morning? This is something morning or middle of the day. And I know this is like for Hamas Row example, I had discussion with the former, uh, the, the great Hamas Row Yuri Tam. And he said, Sergey, I like it because this is, will be possibility for throws to be focused. For everyone will <laughs> focus for them because normally we're always on this side. <laughs> or early in the, the program, but it's n n n never highlighted for, for our uh, finals. It's very difficult to find the fine line, isn't it? Absolutely. There's always going to be some people Absolutely. who are going to be disgruntled and disappointed. Um, now, can we talk about Doha, awarded the 2019 Worlds after London? There have been a few suggestions of uh, illegal deals regarding Doha's bid. I mean, what are your thoughts on that? I think it's, it's speculation. When we don't have any evidence, I think we should be fair and correct to the process. Normally, we have procedure, we have rule and regulations. What was presented to IWF Council, as IWF Council last month decided, everything done legally with some in, in incentives which was officially presented and not violate our rules. And of course, when we discuss about possibility to move the championships in different parts of the world, and of course, we, we will go first time to this area. We'll be present new technology of the, the cooling the stadium. And you can use air conditioning in open air where we'll be to decide which temperature do you want to have. Because this is health issue of the athletes is very important also for us. For that, it will open its new technology for some areas not in the Middle East, in some other areas, where it's also hot and humid, but this technology opened the, the, the door for some other e events. And of course, for athletics, this is, will be first time to promote and present athletics on this uh, outer world championships. I think the decision exists was three very serious, three strong candidates. Sure. It's clearly very strong. What about Barcelona? What about Eugene? It's, it's United States, athletics, history, and it's very important for us. And it's, it's also Doha. It's a new, 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 new place. For that decision is done, we should respect the decision. If some speculation or any violation, I am confident the IWF will act. But today, it's only speculation. And then it's maybe a little bit too early as well to treat a, a subject that's... Uh... Yes, yes. This only, it's clearly, it's, it's only talks today. But we must be fair and correct to, to everything what is in our role. Well, I'm afraid we've come to the end of this edition of Sports Leaders, but it's been an absolute pleasure to have Sergei Bubka, Vice President of the IAAF, who's come in to join us. Um, thank you very much, Sergei. It's been a pleasure. And um, how do you say in Ukrainian? I think it's Shas Lyovoho Rizdva. Thank you very much. <laughs> you spoke about the Christmas, and it's today's Christmas, and it's really a nice and special day for me to be with you here. Thank you very much, Sergei Bubka. Well, from us, thank you very much for watching. We'll be back very soon for another edition of Sports Leaders. Goodbye.